Aloha. Welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We are your hosts. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to today's show. The goal of this show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career and or business. Reg Baker was our guest on our last show and his words of wisdom can be accessed on Newman Consulting Services website, newmanconsultingservices.com or our landing page, danelia.org. Joining us today in the studio as our honor guest is Guy Benjamin, Managing Partner and Direct Executive Director of Hawaii Medical College. Mahalo for joining us today. Thank you for Guy. having me. Yeah, welcome, Guy. Here. All right. We're excited about having you on the show. It's good to be here. Yeah. All right. We, we don't have a lot of time, so we're going to get right into it. Yeah, if go we can. for it. First of all, I'd like for you to share with our viewers, if you will, uh, a little about Hawaii Medical College and, and your responsibilities at the college. Yeah, we have uh, about 400 students uh, down on Kapiolani Boulevard. Uh, it's a healthcare certification and training school, um, mostly in healthcare, um, allied health, technical um, positions mm -hmm. such as phlebotomy tech, ECG tech, okay. uh, pharmacy tech. What's an ECG? Um, you know, the heart, EKG. Oh, EKG. EKG. Yeah, okay. it's, it's K in German, it's C in English. <laughs> 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 that was what I was told, so I started going to ECG. Okay. Um, we have a billing and coding right. program, mm -hmm. um, uh, too, and, and our largest program is a clinical medical assistant. Mm -hmm. All right. right. So um, how did you decide to pursue the career that you have right now, and what was the pivotal moment? Well, before we get there, what are some of your responsibilities oh. there? My responsibilities, I'm uh, one of the... Uh, partners oh, okay. and I have the overall responsibility for the operations oh. of the school right now so okay. um, big responsibility big responsibilities <laughs> make sure we meet all federal and state guidelines yes. so the buck stops with you uh, yes okay. what's wonderful guy you and I met oh well we all met years mm -hmm. ago mm -hmm. and you know to see the growth in that period in that time right. has been fantastic so congratulations on that, right. really. Yeah, yeah, thanks. We I think we met, we might have had 50. Yeah. Not certainly over 100 students that yes. we weren't accredited yes. uh, at all and, and, and really struggling to get going. And right. then, you know, 400 students later, here we are. Right. And you've morphed into 400 plus, you know, yeah. moving and still counting, right? right? So how did you get into this? How did you become a managing partner? How did you start the school? Well, there's... Um, Personally, I've always been in education. Um, it was in School of Education at Stanford University. Mm. Came out here to Hawaii uh, to be uh, on the staff at uh, Hawaii Manoa, mm -hmm. University of Hawaii Manoa, uh, as a student service specialist, and then uh, with the DOE. And then I went to work uh, for a college named Hawaii Business College. Mm. And I ended up my, there being a job placement. Director, I went there because my daughter um, was um, uh, she she grew up local girl, mm -hmm. uh, just mom's hoping that she could make it through high school. Mm -hmm. uh, she went to high school and now what? Mm -hmm. And she heard Hawaii Business College on um, uh, on the radio and it was on one of her stations and mm -hmm. so she thought, wow, I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. uh, and she ended up going. Blossom became the student body treasurer, vice right. you know, ended up getting a degree, and now she's working at uh, Naho, Nahoku Jewelry as their mm -hmm. uh, senior uh, tech person. I know you're very proud of it. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. so it, it, it took, it transformed her, yeah. and I thought, wow, you know, I m might want to look into being a part of that, mm -hmm. and so I, I was. They hired me as the job placement director, and then the executive director had left. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a pharmacist, and he took on another jo uh, job. Mm -hmm. And uh, they asked me to become the executive director, mm -hmm. so I did so, mm -hmm. uh, and started in started in that way. Mm -hmm. But okay. I guess let's talk about <laughs> the pivotal moment, because that right. that is really a wonderful story right. about how you actually started Hawaii Medical. Right. College. Right. Well, the, the it's a pivot from being an employee, yeah. right, 
And just thinking like that, thinking mm -hmm. your world is like that, to being an owner or uh -huh. being an entrepreneur. Right. And it, it happened to us. We had an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We walked into Hawaii uh, Business College one day and the doors were padlocked. Oh, wow. And the, um, the owner had um, not fulfilled some financial requirements mm -hmm. and so he lost his ability to offer federal financial aid, which mm -hmm. is the backbone yes. of I mean, any college. any college, yeah. right? So okay. he um, so he, he closed, and then we ended up going to work. And there's students out there and going, "What are we gonna do?" Yeah. And we realized that they they could get jobs. The medical assistants could get jobs if they could just pass their cert, uh -huh. okay, certification. Right. And so we ended up renting. Okay, we can help them. We ended up renting a uh, uh, office by the day, by the hour. Wow! We w went, we trained them. They passed their certifications. They went on and got jobs, mm -hmm. and then a few more heard about that. Yeah. And we did did that for about six months, and then students would ask us, "Well, why don't you just why don't you do the whole thing?" Mm -hmm. And that was the time we looked at each other and said, wow, you know, are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Yeah. We don't have any, any money. Yeah. And so it's a pretty amazing story just the way that we started without any capital. Mm -hmm. Literally uh, borrowing the, the bond money from my mom's 401k wow. and wow. taking out credit cards and, wow. and doing the, getting people to work for free for yeah. us to, that yeah. believed in us. And uh, we did that for six months, and I guess we were doing good and had a good reputation, and mm -hmm. the jobs were there, and, mm -hmm. and then it, it, it grew. Isn't it uh, amazing that, yes. about sequence of events? How did yeah. you know that was the right decision? Because that's really scary. I mean, fear must have just been deep down, but how did you overcome that fear to really jump in there, you know, to do all of that? I mean, did you, was it just, it was really on faith, but... What did you feel it? What what was that? It was an opportunity. Okay. Right, and I always feel you know you you may not get many opportunities yes. if any, and you have to take advantage of them right. once you get them. And so I've had that in the back of my mind. Right. But I think the what and yes, it was scary. What yeah. do I do? Because I had another job at yeah. another college in line um, as a as a director, mm -hmm. but my wife mm -hmm. said you need to do that. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, she's going to support me from home, right? Right, and that—that's huge support. And then my best friend from, uh, here, uh, who I respect a lot, mm -hmm. told me to go ahead and do it, mm -hmm. right? And so my my best friend, my wife, I figured I had some support, right. and I just went and did it. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell no. you why, because so many people are in this situation yeah. where they, you know, they get laid off or. They go to the door and all of a sudden it's locked and right. what do I do with my life? Right. And that really is a pivotal moment in so right. many people's lives. As, as we look back over careers and everything, right. you know, you make a decision. Do I let it, let it bring me down or do right. I do something about there, it? There was some benefit in, um, uh, in that situation that we were able to hire the best of right. the best, right? right? Uh, and take them. So they were good people. We had worked with them. Mm -hmm. We were close. It was easy to put them on the... Um, on the same same mission, right? Um, and it just it it kind of came a passion, right? right? It kind of became a, a collective uh, mm -hmm. a, a goal that we had to right. make this thing to make this thing work. Right. We didn't have any idea we were going to go to 400 students. Right. We were thinking, wow, if we could just mm -hmm. you know get get these students jobs and right. yeah maybe we can make a little money and right. you know I could substitute teach on the side right. and, uh, yeah, that's how we were and it just kept yeah. going uh, fantastic but to give you even more confidence when you when you found that you were being recognized and I, I asked this question uh, Hawaii Medical College was honored as being one of the top I mean one of the uh, finalists and the 50 fastest growing businesses by the Pacific Business uh, News. News. Mm -hmm. And congratulations on that, by the Thank way. You. In 19, Thank you. Uh, it was 2015. Mm -hmm. right. So that must have given you even more confidence that, and showed you that you were doing the correct thing. Right. I mean, it, it was shocking, you know, yeah. really. I mean, because now, now you have 
some visibility in the community, right. you know, mm -hmm. just not when, with, uh, with, with students. Yes. But we were, you know, timing in business. Yes. We were That's able true. to, unfortunately, when we started, Aloha Airlines mm -hmm. went out of business, mm -hmm. but they had a lot of training money. Mm -hmm. And so we had a couple of Aloha, um, former Aloha employees come, mm -hmm. start our class, said they liked it, went back to their other yes. uh, colleagues, and before you know it, we had 40 Aloha yeah. employees, right? Fantastic. And then, and then, so that allowed us to get work links money, yes. you know, unemployment. Mm -hmm. right. And remember, this is 2007, so the economy right. was was down. And I, I, again, timing, we were in a situation where vocational schools do much better mm -hmm. with a bad economy than they do right. with a good economy. Right. Um, and so we had work links, uh, Aloha Airlines, and then we had the surge in uh, Afghanistan and the Department of Defense uh, came up with this military spouse plan college funding mm -hmm. which was really really significant mm -hmm. so then at about over half our students were military spouses mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we did that and then <clears throat> it went on um, we finally got our accreditation and our approval to offer uh, federal financial aid mm -hmm. and then so we were able to do that and that kind of took us to, to where we are mm -hmm. but there were these levels um, of opportunities that we had mm -hmm. uh, that we what would you say is one of your biggest challenges that you experience running a college the obstacles that yeah. you ran into <sighs> I, I think the, they're the unique obstacles that are placed upon us by all the regulations uh -huh. a, a uh, so the true. crediting body we understand <laughs> so we understood. right yeah. well it's measuring outcomes yes right uh, for us uh, we are responsible for meeting a benchmark on yeah. play uh, job placement so 70 percent of our students have to be placed in a in a job mm -hmm. in their area um, seventy percent have to uh, graduate mm -hmm. um, we have to make sure that the uh, there's a, actually a default range so we're even responsible for a student if they pay their bills mm -hmm. or defaulting mm -hmm. mm. yeah uh, um, as well and a couple other um, financial obligations mm -hmm. uh, that, so let me just have. when you said default <laughs> can you expound on that a bit yeah so a student takes the federal government loan mm -hmm. and they graduate or don't graduate and they don't pay it back okay right we're still responsible for them paying it back oh. and we and it has to go we have to have a certain meet and a certain now. benchmark otherwise if we don't meet any of these outcomes mm -hmm. then we lose our opportunity to give federal okay. financial aid right all right so we're going to take a short break this is keys to success on the think tech live streaming network series we're talking with guy benjamin managing partner and executive director of hawaii medical college regarding keys to success my name is danelia d-a-n-e-l-i-a -E and i'm the other half of the duo john newman We'll be returning in a minute, so please stay tuned for more Keys to Success. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We are here every Tuesday at 3 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii, talking to and about shrinks and mental health. Please join us. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. Aloha, my name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about the responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha.
Welcome back. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at thinktechhi if you have any questions or comments. We've been talking with Guy Benjamin, Managing Partner and Executive Director of Hawaii Medical College. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome back. So Guy, we're going to get right back into it if we can. How do you stay motivated? Um, I, I stay motivated because, I, because of the students. Yes. Okay. Right? Um, and when, when, whenever I get a little bit down or questioning anything at all, then um, I go hang out with the students. Yeah. Okay. And I'm fortunate enough, not only do uh, am I the managing partner, but I also teach a class. Uh -huh. And so I have an opportunity to have every student that comes through yeah. at least touch me for a few hours right. uh, that's uh, yeah. for that. And I, and that's really why we do it. That's why I do it. And you and know, we find the same thing for yeah. us. And that, yeah. that shows the, the caring and sharing. Yes. And the student right. feels that they're cared about. You know, yeah. it's just not uh, a check. Right. Or you're just not checking a block, or, uh, yeah. dotting an I, crossing a T. Mm -hmm. They're there to you. there to help them right. get to where they want to be. Yeah, and and, it's and you have a personal interest in it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a good feeling. I thrive off of um, the ability to get through to a student where they have their aha moment mm -hmm. or they have a different way of looking at things mm -hmm. or shifting consciousness mm -hmm. oh, yes. you know they, they just see the world differently mm -hmm. and then that opens up the possibilities mm -hmm. that they may have and then to in help encourage them through that it's interesting because that. that's what we talk about too oh, yes. with yeah. our classes we talk about the same thing sure. that aha moment when you see the light come on it's like oh now i get it right. <laughs> oh yes so what advice would you give a employee uh, going into the uh, leadership role for the first time listen I think to to be able to listen look learn from others mm -hmm. uh, see if you can find somebody to be uh, a mentor mm -hmm. um, be patient mm -hmm. um, and I think just uh, just put yourself in situations where you can see not only your department but the operation of the whole school, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you're you're observing, you're looking. Someone's mentoring you, uh, gaining knowledge. Okay. When you said listen, that's one of the things yeah. Danielle and I uh, stress in our in our business management school that we have. A person that listens is a powerful person, mm -hmm. and if you listen, and I think that makes your your student and uh, your uh, the person that's in your school understands that they what they right. say means something. That's yes. right. Absolutely. And uh, we've all had that yeah, moment right. and say, well, uh, if you just listen to me, why didn't you just listen to what I have to say? Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Right. And um, yeah, yeah, definitely, it has has more meaning coming from them. The other thing that we ask from from teachers is we try to ask questions. Mm -hmm rather than lecture and mm -hmm. talk and tell them what's right, right, right. right? But if, again, if it can come from them, if you can mm -hmm. answer, yeah, ask the right questions, and you mm -hmm. have to know a little bit about where the students are mm -hmm. to, at, to ask the right question. Mm -hmm. um, and then they tell you the answer. Right, right. right? So, so it's kind delivery. Of sh yeah, delivery. Yeah, kind of shift, it, shift right. the whole old school mm -hmm. uh, way of, disseminating information so what is what is your uh, definition of success and when do you feel that you know when when did you feel that you became successful yeah um, I don't use the typical definition of success I use more of a, um, a mindset definition of success a program uh, that Car uh, dr. Carol Dweck from Stanford University mm -hmm. um, has, has created uh, the brainology component to that too. A lot of schools are moving into into that. And we define success as growth, mm -hmm. right? And it's the learning, it's the growth, it's the hard work, it's the, uh, the persistence. That is success. Yeah. You'll eventually succeed. But if you yeah. have a marker that's really an artificial marker yes. and it's a construct in, in in many situations and then students will measure themselves up against that right. or not and then they'll take action 
whether they succeeded or they didn't succeed. Right. And, and that's where you have a lot of students drop off that's or they true. start having a different attitude right. um, rather than... Um, and, you know, and the other thing, it motivates them too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It motivates them because see, they're seeing the, just these small little successes yeah. that they have. And, and, you know, with us too, we find that when the, when the students grasp and believe that they can, that's when the turn right. occurs, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you believe you can, that's when success, you can see the success. Right, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think yeah. the, when, when our new students come in and we ask their challenges, two issues pop up all the time. Mm -hmm. One, time management, mm -hmm. because yes. now they just can't go through life. Now right. they're life, work, school, yikes, how do right. I do that? Um, and then the other one is confident. They don't know whether they can do it or not. Mm -hmm. And that, that, in the back of their mind going through, can really um, affect a lot of their actions and their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so we really work hard um, through the mindset mm -hmm. to show them that they can yes. be successful. Yeah. What, do you, what do you feel is the most valuable lesson that you've learned at this stage of your life and career? My stage? Mm. I would say to um, anything you do, and I mean anything, work, life, it, I've learned to reduce it down to one thing, right? One thing. If you do one thing at a time, you finish it, then you go to the next thing, you finish it, and then you go to the next mm -hmm. thing, you finish it is better than doing that and doing, trying to multitask yes. on two thing, three things at a time and finishing none of them right. or finishing one of them, right? Mm -hmm. Now that requires you to prioritize and put off some mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. beca because you're linear, you know, as you go through. But I think just reducing, reducing down. I ask my students after they leave the first class, tell me one thing one thing that you can do because i gotta study yeah. i gotta go to class i gotta get babysitters i yeah. gotta what if there's one thing yeah. mm -hmm. that you can focus on for your success here what will it be yeah. and then they can always come back to that they yeah. got that what's the next thing right okay. so it's and a we, we look steps. at we look at the time management and problem yeah. solving going hand in hand as well mm -hmm. you know oh yeah right. that's what you need to do mm -hmm. and we we in this program you know for our listeners and our viewers yeah. we always ask a signature question of our guests and it goes like this what would be your three top success habits? Um, slowing down. Mm -hmm. Slowing down? Slowing down. And can and you expound on that? Yeah, slowing down uh, and think of quality ra rather than quantity. Mm -hmm. I think as you start to get up in an executive managerial level, mm -hmm. you got so many things going on, mm -hmm. it's just like, right. wait a minute, let's tackle this, mm -hmm. this and this, mm -hmm. rather than trying to be all things to all people and wanting to do too much. Mm -hmm. So okay. instead, of, uh, uh, in, instead of when we roll out uh, something like a, uh, let's say a tutoring program, mm -hmm. and rather than just rolling it all out, we'll test it, mm -hmm. right? Just kind of see how it goes, Okay. right? So that's uh, kind of what I mean by slowing down, um, being ca cautious mm -hmm. and just doing what you can do mm -hmm. and do it successfully. So I think um, slowing down is definitely uh, one. Two is um, having patience. Uh, I don't know many people that uh, respond to managers or partners that, uh, that aren't impatient mm -hmm. and demanding. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, maybe they do. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly do. Uh, I haven't seen many people in education field do, mm -hmm. respond that way. So, um, so I think patience uh, is a, a third one. And, I, and then really it's uh, being persistent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not giving up. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you're going to go through. There are some days. Some days, <laughs> some days more than more we than a, more than others. It's a fifty. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a marathon, not a fifty-yard dash. Yeah. You know what somebody told me yeah. once? He said, "Think of it as a twenty-mile march, 
one mile at a time. Yeah, there you go. that's exactly one right. mile at a it's time. A series of steps. And if it's an, an yeah. obstacle, it's just meant to go over, around, or yeah. through. Yeah. And it's not a the, the challenge isn't to get there the fastest. The challenge is to get there. That's there right. Know. Right. Yeah. Um, powerful. I, yeah. Very so powerful. The, the old tur tur tortoise and the hare. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. The the old uh, tortoise just has to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Slow and smooth and <laughs> fast and accurate. Right. You, know? you get too old, you might, you know, want right. to <laughs> stop and have a Mai Tai along the way. <laughs> well, you know, didn't this time go so quickly? There's yeah. so much to talk about. We're out of time. We'll have to wrap it up. Um, Guy Benjamin's words of wisdom with regards to key success can be found on Newman Consulting Services webpage, newmanconsultingservices.com and landing page danelia.org. Thank you to you, our viewers and listeners, for tuning in. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Zuri Bender, our floor manager, Nick Sexton, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. Thank you, Guy, for joining us today. Sure. What wonderful information and sharing your insights to success. To, uh, Think the tech, keys, uh, to success. keys to success will be back on next Thursday at 11 a.m. We ask that everyone tune in and ask your friends and family to do so as well. My name's Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and again, I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Thank you so much for coming, I mean, for, for tuning in. And uh, we'd like to leave you with a quote, if we will. It's by an unknown artist, and it says, do not put the keys to your success in someone else's pocket. Yeah. We thank you all. Aloha. Aloha.